I recently made a promise to myself that if I ever got a new boyfriend, I'd be on the lookout for red flags and I'd murder them. And killing kids is kind of a red flag. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn reincarcerated for road rage in a bank buys her freedom once more by joining the squad. This colorful, cheeky, cheerful, psychotic still has all her deadly dynamic moves, and the single and ready-to-mingle rogue is as eager as ever to show them off. Much to Amanda Waller's dismay, but Harley, in her signature ladylike style, isn't afraid to manhandle anyone who comes her way. Examining the figure's accessories, Harley Quinn comes included with a trading card. Happy to report that once again they're using source material as an image to be presented on the front of the card and not relying on the figure photography. Why did they do that for a period of time? I hope they certainly stick with the idea of using source material. It makes, I think, the collecting of the cards mean more valuable. Not that they actually have a value to them, but at least looking at them inside of a trading card sleeve, I'd rather much look at Margot Robbie meow, and actually looking at an image of an action figure. That's just me. That's my personal preference. This this dress actually is also, of course, the inspiration why we get the figure looking like this. I hope at some point that we also get Harley Quinn in her suit, the jacket and the pants as well. She is also wielding in her hand Javelin's Javelin. I'll talk more about that when we look at the figure's accessories more so, but flip around to the back, there is a read-up. The source is the Suicide Squad Films 2021, which admittingly I wish the movie could have done better. Something about DC Films. Marvel Films, you can put an absolute garbage film out there. Captain Marvel! And it does well. Reaches a billion dollars. You put out a DC film and it never seems to get the same amount of attention going for it. And that's, it's almost like it's always a curse that plagues the DC Films. That's a topic for another day. Anyways, we're going to move the card out of the way. The other thing she comes included with, stock. Implying that all the other figures also usually come with these is the same standard stand. Brandished down below. Psst. You got the DC logo down below. And there's also the singular peg at the top corner that will attach to either one of her feet. You can't attach both feet. That's not how one peg works with two holes. But at least you have one foot that you can attach that peg. So standard stand. Standard stand. We'll put that to the side. And also she comes included with Javelin's Javelin. So strange to say that. The Javelin, as you can see, has been molded nicely enough in gold plastic. It's a fairly soft plastic that taking it out of its plastic tray, I couldn't help but notice it was slightly arched onto the one side. I'm going to have to say, see if I can heat that up a little bit, flatten it out. While the detailing is good, it does lack a lot in the paint department. Making a valid argument, I'm sure you could, that it's gold plastic. It's supposed to be gold anyways in the movie. But I think it really could have used a little bit of something extra. A wash of paint over top of it. And certainly right in the middle there as well, I think this is supposed to be brown. I mean, certainly it looks... Well, you know what, let's bring in the <laughs> source material. Thank you, source material. As you can see, it's more brown right in the middle area. They're like the middle handle section of it. It's also got a little bit of silver on there as well. Like they sort of just, I don't want to say phoned it in, but they went for the bare basics here of just molding it here in gold plastic. You can fit this into either one of her hands. I actually had it in the beginning of this review, I think clipped onto one hand. And the benefit of having the figure with double, double hinges on the elbows is that you can bend the elbow back and actually have the arm, actually have the javelin displayed on her shoulder, which might possibly be the way I'm going to display Harley Quinn in my own collection. You can rinse and repeat, of course, just having on this side if you want to as well. So that is a nice touch. Kind of wish it could have used a little bit more, could have had a little bit more paint. But all things considered, at least she comes included with it. And then the last thing you certainly will see, I mean, how could you overlook a lower half of a giant shark? She comes included with the lower under ruse of King Shark. She is only one of four figures in the Suicide Squad wave, so... It is really fairly easy to pick up all four figures if you can actually find them. I had pre-ordered these figures last month and they now finally just started showing up. But she does come with the lower, lower trunks, the lower shorts of King Shark. Who actually is buying this, this material for him? Are these made to order? These look like he would have bought these. 
I can't imagine what size King Shark would. He'd have to go to like the big and tall, big, big, tall, tall store in order to get shorts, I think, this size. The touches of detail, not that I like to draw everyone's attention to the fly. It's slightly flying low, but not to, point, not to the point where I feel like somebody should point that out. I mean, I think about halfway down is where we really should say, hey, 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 you're flying low. And then they're usually like, what? And then you might get the odd idiot that kind of looks up into the sky. What, what are you talking about? You're flying low. I don't think this would be a case where I would say he's flying low. But the fly, the fact that they sculpted that in, as well as the button and the texturing to the, the actual uh, uh, shorts here, uh, really, really nice. I mean, very, very nicely done. This is all soft plastic, by the way. And again, not really much to look at. I mean, right now, we're basically just looking at the lower stumped half of King Shark. More of that will follow as we'll have a look at the rest of the figures in this wave. So we'll move that to the side. That being said, let's get a closer look at Harley Quinn in her famous red dress. Kind of glad to see that they started this, this figure, well, the Suicide Squad figures. I could only hope that we're going to get more of these because there are certainly more characters to cover. But I'm glad to see they serve with a red dress. I hope that isn't the last of what we'll see with Harley Quinn. As nice as to see her in a red dress, I would be thrilled to see her wearing the jacket and the pants as well. Certainly, I hope McFarlane Toys makes that happen. For a head sculpt, I have to say I'm pretty impressed by it. There's a strong enough resemblance, I feel, to actress Margot Robbie reprising the role yet again of Harley Quinn. She just can't seem to put out a good movie, it seems. Everything that she's attached to doesn't do too well in movies and theaters. But I think it's a pretty good likeness, though, of her. If I could offer up any little bit of small criticism, I could say, if anything, I feel like the skin is not pale enough. I mean, she bears more like a resemblance to regular flesh tone. I feel like I would have pulled that back even lighter and made her skin a lot fairer than what it is. It should be a little bit more whiter than this. But the face, though, to its credit, is nicely done. Paint's pretty good. The eyes aren't as disastrous as I would have worried about. You can even see that they put a little reflection in the top corners of her eyes. That's nice. Uh, not as many tattoos. She does have the heart there on her cheek, and she actually has a couple of other tattoos on her body as well that we'll talk more about in a second. She does have the pigtails on the front. These almost feel like they want to be posable, but they're actually just the softer plastic. That's why I'm able to do what I'm doing right now. I wouldn't be doing that too much, though, just for the risk that that could break off, because it looks like right there... You can see I'm not going to do it too much, but there's a little line that's developing right there. Oh my, oh my. Be careful of these, especially when it comes to the figure's articulation that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, one of the other tattoos mentioned, she does have the Daddy's Little Monster. A little harder to see there on her chest, right there. She does also have a couple of tattoos there on the side. I will say I'm glad to see that they actually did take the time and put in enough of the tattoos tattoos on figures are always very difficult because sometimes they just only put in some of them and they don't put in all of them. But she has a fair number of them on here. It says property of no one. And little J, little J on the corner there on the shoulder there. And she also has a tattoo there on her, on her dress, which is sort of move the dress out of the way. And it says pudding cups. And we also got the little tally marks there as well. So she does have actually a quite a bit of art, but, but I don't want to say the articulation, quite a bit of tattoos actually on her body. The dress is sculpted decently enough, at least to its credit, it's a softer plastic. So when it comes to moving the figure's articulation, which is something I almost started talking about, she seems to be able to move them quite easily. Yeah, I mean, you can get to about there. After that, it sort of stops allowing you to move the legs out. But to about there, I think that's pretty good, all things considered. I mean, obviously, if this dress went all the way around to this side, yes, it would have limited much more what you could actually do with her legs. But because they have the cut like it does in the movie where the dress sort of sits on an ankle, def definitely does give you a lot more posability going for it. Uh, she does have also her military boots on there as well. One of those unavoidable problems when it comes to articulating a figure is where to hide the joints. Clearly, though, you can see that the boot really is cut. Right here, right underneath, I guess, the start of where the tongue would be of the boot, there's very much an obvious, uh, not a ball joint, but a hinge joint right there. They couldn't have made it a little bit more seamless. I mean, they could have technically even put this peg right here and then taken this top part of the boot and flapped it over as a piece that could move up and down. 
And I feel like that way they could have at least hid the joint so it wasn't so stand out like this. I mean, really, her hands also have that same problem as well. It looks like she's got swollen wrists. But that's one of those things, unfortunately, you're just going to be able to avoid it. The only other thing that they could have done is just pegged the hand into the forearm, and then you would have lost a little bit of the articulation. You would have been able to do this, but you wouldn't have been able to hinge this back and forth. Making a smaller peg also could have been beneficial too, but then that runs the risk that these could be potentially something that could snap. Because you really don't want those to be too small after all anyways. Looking at the posability on Harley Quinn, her head does rotate back and forth, up, down, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. Again, I know I already sound like a broken record for saying this, but just be careful of the hair. I mean, there's so little of it attached right here to the rest of her head. You really don't want that line to develop. I mean, you've got, I've already got it on the one side right here, and I've barely moved the figure's hair. I only did it really just a little bit in this review, but I've already noticed like there's a little line right there. It's starting to develop. It almost feels like she should have articulation, but I feel like I'm only really just twisting the hair right off. And I certainly, I certainly don't want to do that. Don't want that hair falling off. Uh, as for her arms, her arms hinge out very, very easy, actually, because there's nothing really in the way of things rotating the back of the figure so you can see it all the way around. There is definitely not, there's nothing really obstructing those arms. You can also, she does have the little socketed joint on the inside of her torso that allows the arms to hinge out this way. And you can also kind of move them forward in as well. And let me spin the figure around so you can see what's happening here. See the little socket joint right there? Just allows a little bit more mileage when it comes to moving those arms in and out. She does have the bicep swivel, so that swivels all the way around. Pleasant again to see, and I know I already said this already, but pleasant to see that she does have double hinges on the elbows. Sometimes female figures don't seem to always get those. Sometimes they just have a single hinge and then you can rotate the forearm. I'm glad to see that they actually put a double hinge on the elbow, especially if you want to have the javelin over her shoulder like that. Now, of course, then when it comes to her hands, the hands rotate all the way around. Yes, they look swollen, unfortunately, in the wrist, but again, for, the, for it to be able to do this back and forth, and for it to also be able to do this as well, very little much of an, they're very little in the way of an alternative that they could have gone about instead of actually just doing it this way. Uh, she doesn't have any waist swivel, just because all of her body is kind of encased inside the dress here. It seems soft enough right here, almost as if you would be able to do something with her torso, but I can't really move it. I mean, you could kind of crunch it up and down just a little bit, but not really much to do anything with. The legs split out. You can bring the legs forward and back. This is kind of where they're a little bit more limited. Um, this leg more is the worst problem is because the, the draping of the dress, how far down it goes. This leg gives you a little bit more mileage, but not by much. That's about it. As much as you can accomplish. She does have a double hinge on the knee. She doesn't have any articulation. I would have almost thought the top of her boot would have been articulated when you've been able to rotate it back and forth, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And again, you can move the feet up, down. You kind of come rocking back and forth as well. And she does also have toe articulation too. Kind of nice to see when you get figures with toe articulation. Let's go ahead and get the staff back in her hand. The javelin. There we go. And all things considered, not a bad looking Harley at all. A few little things, a few little talking points. Getting the figure actually probably stand would be one of them. Uh, the only thing I probably would have done cosmetically to the figure is made her skin just a little bit lighter. I feel like she's still too warm in the skin tone. I would have maybe made her a lot paler than what she is. Also, the javelin. Javelin is basically just molded gold plastic. I think I would have probably gone in there and just touched that. I could probably even just touch that up myself. Other than that, though, it's a nice looking Harley Quinn. I hope it's not the only Harley Quinn that we're getting, though, from the Suicide Squad film. As we have red dress Harley Quinn spinning around in the rotisserie, I've just borrowed the boy in blue, Superman's flight stand. I'm sure he's not going to mind anyways. He's not using it right now. Four to put her in a pose where she's leaping in the air with the javelin in her hand. I kind of like this look. I think ultimately, though, when I finished reviewing the other three figures, because there's after all only four figures in this wave, and I put together King Shark, so technically there's five figures from the Suicide Squad wave. I'm just going to ultimately, I think, have the figures displayed on a shelf standing together. I know it's... It's not, as, it's not as interesting as having Harley Quinn leaping in the air, but you can't have all your figures in some pretty crazy poses. Okay, maybe I'll do it for Harley Quinn, and all the rest of the figures can kind of just stand around her. We are one figure down. 
if you're taking tally. It's actually a pretty short list to go by. Like I said, there's only four figures. And four figures, you also get yourself a King Shark, which is strange enough because McFarlane Toys is also releasing or have released a King Shark on its own, which was supposed to be a bloodied version. But from what I've seen many images online, it seems to be just the same King Shark. So you can either get King Shark on his own or you can get King Shark by building it with the four figures. And I already want these four figures anyways. So building King Shark was the reward for that. I don't know if I would then go out of my way to pick up another King Shark. Maybe if I wanted to make him a custom. I, I know we're talking about King Shark too early here. Harley Quinn, though. Nice looking figure. I think, again, the likeness to Margot Robbie is pretty spot on. The coloring on her skin could be a little bit lighter. And yes, there probably could have been a lot more color on Javelin's Javelin. But all things considered, we have ourselves a nice looking red dress Harley Quinn. Red dress Harley Quinn. Some people probably were a little disappointed that we never got the jacket and pants Harley Quinn. Kind of more of that familiar Arkham looking Harley. I hope at some point, because there's still more Suicide Squad characters we could get from McFarlane's team, that we will be getting also the, you know, the more traditional looking Harley Quinn outfit as a future release. In the meantime, though, really nice looking figure. I have some difficulties with her hair, something I already talked about in this review. Just be careful. Just be careful of the hair. Other than that, I think you're going to have a blast if you pick up the Harley Quinn and add it to your collection. Speaking of which, have you added Harley Quinn to your collection? Have you picked up this figure? If you have, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it, or based on this review. As I said, we're going to be having a look at the rest of the Suicide Squad wave. That's another three figures to go. And along the way, we're going to be building King Shark. Right now, we just have the lower shorts. And he's, I don't think, I'm going to say he's not flying low. Even if he was flying low, I would never tell him because he'd rip me in half. But we are going to be building King Shark. So there's definitely a lot more videos coming your way. The key, though, to making sure that you're not missing out on anything is by hitting the subscribe button down below turning the bell notification on so you get in those friendly reminders from YouTube. And yes, making sure you're keeping your peepers peeled because there will be more videos coming your way. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.